We come to the god of Geo himself, Morax. Or to be more correct, human form and playable character, Jean Li. So without further ado, let's learn more about our god of contracts. Also, if you hear any scratching noises in the background, that's just a fish tank. Sorry, I can't really do anything about that. Zhang Li is a playable Geo character in Genshin Impact. A consultant of the Wanshin Funeral Parlor, he is later revealed to be the current vessel of the Geo Archon Morax, who has decided to experience the world from the perspective of a mortal. Zhang Li is a male character in Genshin Impact. His weapon is a polearm and his vision is Geo. His birthday is December 31st, and his constellation is Lapis Dai and his nation is Liwei. Zhang Lin has four affiliations with Liwei Harbor, which is on profile, one Shin Funeral Parlor, and the seven with the Adepti. His special dish is Slow Cooked Bamboo Shoot Soup, which is a variant of Bamboo Shoot Soup. He became a playable character on December 1st, 2020. The four voice actors of the Geo Archon in the four localizations of Genshin Impact are Kevin Silverstein in English, Pem Bo in Chinese, Meino Tomaraki in Japanese, and Pio Yanje in Korean. Jolene goes by two main titles, Vagu Mundo and Wanshan Funeral Parlor Consultant. Jolene currently appears as a tall man with fair skin and a stern expression. His eyes are bright and sharp. Amber in color with glowing yellow pupils set in the shape of diamonds. He wears red eyeliner on the lower li lids of his eyes. When using Geo, his eyes become luminescent. His dark brown hair is styled in a windswept fashion with a longer fridge that hangs from the right side of his face. It fades to amber brown at the tips and it pulls back into a ponytail that falls beyond his waist. When he is using the Geo abilities, his amber highlights glow. This appearance is also used in the statues of the Seven depicted of Rax Lapis around Liwei. His attire is elegant and form-fitting, consisting of a beige dress shirt, a brown and amber waistcoat, slimmed, black trousers, black dressed boots, and black gloves, with twin silver archer wings on his thumbs. His neck piece is a white tie, pinned at the throat by an amber gemstone. His left ear is adorned with a jeweled tassel earring. Over everything, he wears a long, dark brown tailcoat with dragon scaled patterns, golden silver aspects. With, um, gold, with golden tassels, and Wax Lapis's diamond symbol on the back. Zhang Lin's clothes are decorated with diamond symbols found on his sleeves, belt, trousers, waistcoat buttons, and tailcoat buttons. Similar to Venti, because he is an Archon with an intent Geonos, the vision embedded on a chain at the small of his back is nothing more than a fake. Previously, he appeared as a brown and amber Chinese dragon with gold assets known as the Exuvia. His outfit, Hermit of Mortal Life, is depicted to be his leisure wear of choice as a consultant for the Wanshun funeral parlor. Zhang Li is a calm, reserved, and polite man who holds an air of nostalgia. He knows much about Li Wei's history and culture in part due to his time as the Geo Archon. Like Venti, he has many experiences and memories as he was a god, well, before the Seven even existed, and one of the oldest living in the fact. 
He holds physiological ideas towards money and has great respect for Liwei traditions, including those that have been forgotten or wrapped over time. Zhongli intends to be humble, being worried he comes off as a bourgeois parasite. Zhongli tends to forget about more in transactions, agreeing to spend large sums of it without having any more on hand and even taking discounts as granted despite being an obvious scam. He often ends up relying on his acquaintances for financial support, such as the one Shinfino or Paula or Child. Although he works for Hu Tao, he does not call like to she does not he does not like her childish behavior. It is later revealed that Zhang Lin's carelessness seems to stem from being the creator of Mora. With the Genos allowing him to create luminous Mora, he never had to worry about running low on his professional finances. Unfortunately, when he chose to live among mortals, he lacked the foresight to find an alternative of them to continue minting Mora in his absence. Along with creating a retirement fund for himself as a result, he seemingly spends the Mora of others. Being the reminiscent person he is, Jean-Lin enjoys Upmentis wine as it was a drink he and his former Archon friends used to have when they met up in Liwei. He dislikes seafood as it reminds him of the promise he made to his people in the past when he fought a particularly annoying type of sea creature. Although he does not mind eating them if they have been ground to a pulp. Rain of Stone is Zhang Lin's normal attack. The normal attack performs up to 5 constructed spear strikes, while the charge attack consumes a certain amount of stamina to lunge forward causing stone spears to fall along the path. And the plumbing attack plunges from mid-air to strike the ground below, damaging opponents along the path and dealing AoE damage upon impact. Dominus Lepidus is Jean Lin's elemental skill. Every mountain, rock, and itch of land is filled with the power of Geo, but those who can wield such powers freely are few and far between. Using press commands the power of earth to create a stone sheet, I mean steel, and using hold consumes nearby Geo energy to explode, causing the following effects. If their maximum number hasn't been reached, creates a stone steel, creates a shield of jade, the shield's damage absorption skills based on Jean Lin's max HP, deals AoE geo damage. If there are nearby targets with geo element, it will drain a large amount of geo elements from the maximum of two such as targets. The effect does not cause damage. The stone steel, when created, deals AoE damage. Of Geo. Additionally, it is iteratively resonant with other nearby Geo contracts, dealing Geo damage to surrounding opponents. The stone steel is consisted of a Geo construct that can both be climbed and used to block attacks. Only one steel, created by Zhang Lin himself, may initially exist at any one time. And the Jade Shield possesses 150% of damage absorption against all elements of physical damage. Characters protected by the Jade Shield will decrease the elemental rest and the physical rest of opponents in a small amount AoE by 20%. This effect cannot be striked. I meant stacked. Punit Befell is Jean Lin's elemental burst brings a following meteor down to Earth, dealing massive geo damage to opponents caught in its AoE, and implying the prefection, purification status to them. With purification, opponents affected by the purification status cannot move. Resonant Waves is Zhao Lin's first ascension passive skill. When the Jade Shield takes damage, it will fourthly characters have 5% increased shield strength, can stack up to 5 times and last until the Jade Shield disappears. Dominance of Earth is Zhang Lin's 4th Ascension passive skill. 
John Wayne deals damage based on his max HP. Normal attack, charge attack, and plumbing attack damage is increased by 1.39% of max HP. Domain's Lapidus Stone Steel resonates and holds damage is increased by 1.9% of max HP, and Planet Befall's damage is increased by 33% of his max HP. Our Kingdom of Crystal is Jean Lane's utility passive skill. It refunds 15% of the ores used when forging polearm type weapons. In Wee's tradition customs, receiving Adepti and sending Adepti off are equally important. The husks of the Wanshin field parlor who have been in business for 77 generations are the masters of handling funerals. However, Hu Tao, the current owner of Wanshin Funeral Parlor, primarily focuses on the art of sending mortals on their way. For the various ceremonies of sending off Adepti, Hu Tao usually employs the help of a friend in more or less the same business. That person's name is Zhang Li. The Adepti have been with Li Wei for millennia, but only a handful have ascended in the past 3,000 years. Which means that everything regarding the traditions now only exists in text. This is not something one would likely witness twice in their entire lifetime. Not even the most particular and learned of researchers or scholars could find one fault in Ron Shin Funeral Parlor's ceremonies for sending off a dead tie. Everything must be perfect, from the customs, the time, the place, the items, and the weather. The schedule length, the size of permitted absence of an audience, to the statue, profession, and age of said audience, nothing can be overlooked. When folk describe Zhang Li as living history, the ledger usually only smiles and sighs. I, I just have a good memory. In Li Wei, if a person play, pays great attention to details and has inseparable criteria by which they judge certain matters, then they are called particular. In truth, everyone is particular about something. Some people hate spicy food, others don't like eating fish, and some want their tofu served sweet. But as for Zhang Ling, he is particular about everything. He attends operas performed by only the most celebrated stars takes only the most lecturing treasures out for walks. And he goes into the kitchen personally and to, to instruct with the cooks, as the ratio of shrimp and fish required to make the most authentic full moon egg. Xiaomi has expertise in all matter of things, from fashion to daily essentials to fine wines and delicacies, to teas and spices, and the flora and fauna. He is also more than capable of practicing in discussions on community politics and in national relations. But on a typical day, all you will glean from him is a few pieces of useless trivia because he particularly enjoys sharing these fun tabits with you. When making a purchase, look to haggle. This is a common understanding among the people of Liwei. No matter what high heavens the store owner praises to their product too, no matter its ancient history or classical value, prices are always flexible. Half the standard cost is the good place to start. But when Jean Lane plays up, or rather calls for someone else to pay up for him on his behalf, he never looks at the price tag. As long as it catches his eye, Li Zhongli will pay as much as the owner asks. Indeed, he will even buy it at a premium sometimes. But for some reason, Zhongli always forgets to bring money. For small purchases, he has friends to help him out. In large bills, he somehow finds ways to have written off. To those merchants who secretly pride themselves on their powers of flattery, Zhang Lin is the man of strange is the man of strange particles in truth. He knows a great deal about the value of money and finance, 
and he also understands the suffering of the people. However, he seems to not understand that poverty is part of the human construct condition. Or perhaps it might be said that he cannot image himself being poor. How as such a person does not die of hunger yet. There is no way Jean-Louis can strive. Such concerns as profit and loss are beneath his notice. The seven nations and the world itself are where his efforts are directed. As for wealth, he is wealth itself. He is Morax, the overlord Rex Lapis, who rules Leeway and the Geo Archon of the Seven Archons. The very money that circulates throughout Vat Mora is named after him. When night falls and a blushing Leeway begins to slumber, he will sometimes stand atop the towering mountains and gaze upon the city, which he made with his own hands. To the people of Leeway, Rex Lapis has many divine titles. When he laid down Leeway's laws by the divine might, he was the god of contracts. When he minted the first Mora and made Leeway strong by dint of circumstance, the merchants reserved him as the god of comments. He has lived throughout countless years and is the eldest of the seven, and so historians call him the god of history. Thousands of years ago, the forebears of the citizens of Leeway Harbor struck stones together to start fires, and used piled stones to create stoves. These blessings derived from Geo Element, led to Geo Archon to gain the title of the God of the Stove. People from other lands tend to call him Morax, though the people of Leeway prefer to use the term Rex Lapis. But in the hearts of lovers of opera and children, Morax on stage expects the all-conquering defender of Leeway. The warrior god is the most fascinating. That was my dad working in the background. But, um, the delicacies that Rex Lapis discovered while lost in the streets. The plaques inscribed with his handwriting, a famous opera that he once turned in, playing the part of a warrior. Many stories and tales of Leeway are, when studied closely, stories of people visited by their deity at some point, and the citizens of Leeway are most proud indeed of that history. As the founder of Leeway Harbor, contracts are the most important thing to Morax. For simple majority exchange and agreements between merchants to the ancient laws that Morax himself laid down, there is no part of the city left untouched by contracts. To merchants, contracts are the most important standard to which they hold themselves, deadlines, invoices, shipping descriptions, only a refund, and strict order can sustain vibrant communities, which is itself the lifeblood of Leeway Harbor. Thus, the Leeway Chi Sing punish violators such of such laws in consistently on only the uphold to divine rulings of Morax, but also allow Leeway to maintain its valerie. Throughout the millennia, many every generation of Leeway Chi Sing commits to interpreting the law, including suitable amendments to plug loopholes found in the law. Any loopholes that remain undiscovered are seen by the merchants as permissive unaddressed, and they make killings off such holes until they are discovered and patched up by the Leeway Chising. Amid of this game of cat and mouse, the book that collides such amendments has reached a whooping of 279 pages thick. The person currently responsible for maintaining this book the Taekwon Ming is secretly and humorously referred to as the Tailor of Liwei in honor of her speed in patching, things up, patching these laws up and for her sharpness of eye. But no matter how complicated or tangled moral laws become, one of those standards above all others is the eyes of Rex Lapis. The one who regions on their world shall suffer the wrath of the rock. 
Wexlapis, most ancient of the seven, has lived for too long. Wexlapis still remembers the moment when the final Archon took their divine seat, thus ending the Archon War and the era of Wearing Gods. The seven were devised a lot in deserve far and wide, but they are all shrouded the burden of guiding humanity. As time passes, many of the seven titles change hands, and only two remain of the first seven, Rex Lapis and the Animal Archon, the Carefree Barbados. The Animal Archon is the second eldest of the seven. When Barbados first came to Leeway, Rex Lapis believed his fellow Archon to have encouraged encountered a terrible crisis in pursuit of their duties, thus requiring his aid. So when Barbados descended in the gust of wind, the Geo Archon had already prepared himself to receive this neighboring deity and led what in the help that he may. But he also looked at the animal Archon, tossed a wine bottle at him. Here's some uh, wine from Mondstadt. Care to have a taste? To forsake one's d duty to deliver a single bottle of wine, what a persocious nation. Yet, the animal Archon kept coming to visit, to explore Rie Harbor, all sorts of strange questions on his lips. The animal Archon's questions knew as little limits as the wine in his hands. From then on, the first seven would often gather in leeway. Rex Lapis still remembers how these wines tasted. The world has changed much since then, and all that was once familiar has faded into memory. The seven seats change, and again change, till five of the seven are at the table were all departed. Nor would the duties of guiding humanity be honored by the new Archons, even the hardest rock may be worn down after 3,000 years, nor would have wind ever return again. One dazzly day, the ancient ruler of was strolling about to Wulei Harbor and overheard a merchant telling one of his workers, You finished your duties? Go ahead and call it a day. Long did he since stand to admit the million crowds. Here, I have already finished my duties. During the Archon Wars, every corner of Tavau was consumed in the fires of conflict. Not only did gods fight amongst themselves, but countless wicked things also sought to expand their domains. Once that type of creature caused no end of war for the Geo Archon, long before he took the title along with his place among the Seven. These four creatures, straight from the murky depths of the Ocean Abyss, had a squiggly exterior and possessed algae techniques that would live on even after being cut off. Even searching the, with some thick and revolting fluid in their progress, this alone would have been enough to make them the most monstrous of all creatures, and still it was not the princess of their monstrosity. What made them so truly terrible was their small size, which gave them the ability to duck into unimaginary small nooks and crannies. No space was too narrow for them, neither the wooden boards of tables and chairs, nor the stems of windows and doors, and certain floors, nor even the books and brushes. Many a poor soul on the least on one occasion unwillingly unscratched their hand only to quickly react in horror with the blood curling scream at the sensation of something cold, clamming, and damped. While one or more of these despicable creatures came crawling up their arms, leaving a shiny trail behind them, at the behest of the people of Lyrae, Morax agreed to wipe these creatures out, but these parasites upon civilization could not be destroyed like enemies on the battlefield, but simply summoning a storm of stone spears that would scatter the earth and chun the soil. Still, he was the god of contracts. His word had been his bound, so he went on drew the town from house to house, for, with persons of, persons of stone, seizing these creatures one by one and locking them away for good. This long champion of pest extermination taught Morax the true meaning of a brutal lifted. 
the growling campaign itself and the terrible smell of those ocean creatures. Sanctions left to the lasting impression of the one on the deity. Today, even when he goes out incognito as the mortal man Zhang Li, Morax gives those living squirming seafood products a raid of breath. Well, except for the dishes where said seafood products have been sliced and diced into oblivion, such as seafood tofu. He's quite happily eat those. Since Shaolin is the god Morax, he has the power over all of Geo Element, and therefore does not need a vision. The vision he has is a fake and used more as a accessory. His real vision would be his genos. Once the right of parting of which Shaolin has both director and star was over, the Fatui Harbinger named Signora appeared before him. By prior contracts, he was he she was here to claim the Geo Archon's Morax nose. Before the traveler and the two Fatui harbingers, Li Wei Zhongming related the truth and he had established a contract with the Cryo Archon. In his warm words, this was the final contract to end all contracts. Yet no matter how one looks at it, the loss of his divine ability to fend Li Wei was not great a a price to pay. He, even amongst mortals, the basis of a contract is equivalent exchange, and for the god of contracts who must have established countless such agreements in the long years of existence, such as importance contract must have come with its benefits. Now that the Geo Archon has given away his gnosis as his part of the deal, what then must the Choir Archon have wield the to the balance the scales? In demonology, Morax is the 21st demon of the Arsgeratia and a president of hell. Ruling over dirty or dirty two accounting of the other authors, legions of demons. He teaches astronomy and other liberal sciences and gives good and wise fair familiars that know the virtues of all herbs and precious stones. He is depicted both as a man with the head of a bull and a bull with the head of a man. His constellation Lapis Di is Latin for the Stone of God. It follows the same pattern as Venti's constellation, Carmen Di. Zhongli is likely named after Zhongli Quan, one of eight immortals of a group of eight legendary Xilan and Daoist mythology. The figure is said to have possessed a large magical fan that can res resurrect the dead, as well as the elemental powers which he used to turn stones and base materials into gold and silver to save people from poverty. Fact 1, Jean-Lin has heavily foreshadowed to be Morax before it was confirmed with the release of Chapter 1, Act 3, in version 1.1. Zhang Lin is extremely knowledgeable about money, government, and Li Wei's traditions and history. Even He even remembers customs and traditions that have been watered down, forgotten, and lost time, as if he was there himself. When he asked the Traveler and Paimon to retrieve the cleansing bell from Madame Ping for the rite of parting, Zhang Lin uncarelessly refuses to join them. Madame Ping says that an old friend gave her the bell, and that, since they have come to borrow it, this friend must have decided to take matters into their own hands. She also makes it a no secret that she is an adeptist, which means Jean-Lin must have much older than the, his apparent age would suggest. Fact, three, fact 2 Xiongling is shown throughout the story to have several connections to Venti, the animal archon Barbados. Xiongling states that a friend from Mondstadt would always bring him a few bottles of dandelion wine when they visited. Dandelion wine is Venti's favorite drink. Fact 3, Xiongling is one of few currently playable characters whose knowledgeables or even seem to be aware that the Traveler is from another world, presumably because of his status as an archon. 
Fact 4, Jean-Lin actually uses the combination of his equipped weapon and stone spears during the normal attack sequence, switching between the two as the attacks. He is currently the only playable character with the specific trait. Jean-Lin can also be seen wielding one of these stone spears in his wish art. And that is Jean-Lin's information. Well, this video became a little bit hectic, if you have noticed during um, the story part that um, there was a lot of background noises except for the other background that you're probably hearing in the background at this moment. That might be my fish tank. But yeah, that was my dad working in the background, and just to be like any parent, they don't really care when you're recording a video. They're just gonna work in the background because that's what they do. And I love him for that. Not literally, but I just love my dad. But anyhow, I'm gonna bend the rules for the series a little for the last Lily video by talking about Child, since he did become a playable character and was first introduced in the Leeway chapter. So look forward for that. Bye!